everybody. Hope you're enjoying the 100 days of the 2023 National Electrical Code Changes series. We're talking about Article 695, which is fire pumps. And for this video, we're going to discuss 695.7, which is voltage drop. Now, it's pretty unusual for me to talk about voltage drop because I'm an NEC instructor. And generally speaking, the NEC doesn't care about voltage drop because voltage drop is a performance issue. And we really, I've got a newsflash for you, we don't care about the performance of your system. <laughs> we don't. We care that you don't kill anybody, and we care that you don't light a building on fire. That's what we care about. If you have a voltage drop problem and your equipment doesn't work, oh, tough. Better fix it, right, if you want it to work. Now, as far as the NEC is concerned, we do care about voltage drop when it comes to fire pumps, because again, voltage drop is going to ensure that your equipment actually works. Well, we care that your fire pump works. The fire pump is kind of a big deal. As I mentioned in the previous video, the only time the fire pump is going is when the building's on fire. So we need to make sure that the fire pump can run. And more importantly, we need to make sure it can start. And that's where the voltage drop requirements of 695.7 come into play. So let's take a look and see what they did here in the 2023 NEC. 695.7 voltage drop. The voltage drop requirements were revised to reflect the requirements of NFPA 20. Okay, NFPA 20 is the fire pump standard. The NEC, of course, is NFPA 70, right? So NFPA 20, as you might guess, is not 900 pages like the NEC is. So there's only one group of people that writes the rules for NFPA 20, one committee. In the NEC, there's 18 because the vastness of the document, not only how big it is, but how broad the subject matter is. We don't want the solar guys voting on the rules for hazardous locations any more than we want the hazardous locations people voting on the rules for swimming pools or the swimming pool people voting on the rules for solar. So we have 18 different code making panels. Now, Article 695 falls under code making panel 13. They also have Article 445, which is generators. They have 455, which is phase converters. And then they have the fire and life safety stuff in Chapter 7. Emergency, legally required optional standbys, critical operations, power systems, and of course fire pumps. Now, not everyone on that code making panel is going to be an expert at fire pumps. Some of these guys might be complete, total experts at emergency systems. And maybe not quite an expert on fire pumps. But when it comes to NFPA 20, these are fire pump people. That's their whole world, all right? So when NFPA 20 changes, usually we let them kind of drive the ship, and if they make a technical change, we'll follow suit, and we'll make the same change they did to mirror their requirements. So that's what we have here. Very similar to what we have in hospitals in Article 517 with the NEC and NFPA 99. So here we go. What changed? Well. Motor starting voltage. The voltage at the line side of the fire pump controller must not fall below 15% of the rating of the controller when the motor starts unless allowed by B or C. And you can see that we added some language here that's basically exceptions. Now, one of the things that you can get really screwed up on here, and if you're taking a test, you have to be really careful of this. Uh, and if you're doing it in, you know, in the real world too, we talk about voltage drop and we express it as a percentage, but a percentage of what? In this application, it's a percentage of the fire pump controller rating. So let's take a look. This fire pump is rated 115 volts. The motor is probably also rated 115 volts, so it might not matter in this application, but sometimes you'll have a controller and a motor that don't have the exact same rating. So make sure you're starting your math using the right value. In this application, it's 115. So it must not fall below 15% of that rating, which means you better have at least 97.75 volts at motor startup. All right, so that's on the line side of the fire pump controller. But the starting voltage drop requirement does not apply to emergency run mechanical starting if a successful start can be demonstrated on the standby generator system. Okay, the voltage drop issue with the motor starting really isn't a function of the motor itself. Because think about it, if, if you have a, a 460 volt rated motor, 
right, that you put on a 480 volt circuit, will that motor spin at 400 volts? Sure. Yeah, yeah. not as efficiently. It's designed to spin, you know, at 480 or 460. Uh, so it won't spin as efficiently, but it'll still spin. You can put a lower voltage on an AC motor and it can work. But here's the problem. If you're running it through a contactor, will it start? That's the problem. So when you go to start up a motor and it's going through the contactor, if you don't have enough voltage, the contactor is going to chatter. And that's going to affect the motor. And we care about that. So we're saying, look, 15% is the maximum voltage drop at the line side of the controller unless you're doing a mechanical start. Now, here on this fire pump controller, if you look at the part that I've got highlighted, the emergency start, that is basically saying, look, maybe the contactors failed, maybe it won't start, and you actually, in an emergency, you have to manually start that thing up. It's kind of like if you have a, if you have a lawnmower, like my lawnmower, for example, um, or my, my snowblower, I should say. My lawnmower is electric. For my snowblower, I have a push start on my snowblower. I plug it in, 120 volts, push the button, and it turns on. Works awesome. If that didn't work, then I can always go old school and rip the cord on it, right, and manually start it. I can bypass the electrical start and just go with a mechanical start. That's basically what we have here for the fire pump. I'm not going to measure voltage drop when I'm doing the mechanical start because the voltage drop issue was for the contactor. If I'm bypassing the contactor, then who cares what the voltage drop is, right? The motor will still spin even if you do have a high voltage drop. So the voltage drop is a contactor issue. It's not really the motor issue. So that's why, if we read it again, the starting voltage drop requirement does not apply to emergency run mechanical starting. If a successful start can be demonstrated on the standby generator system. So if you're doing testing and you're doing commissioning of the fire pump, don't worry about measuring voltage drop at the emergency start. You want to do it on the normal start. For the same reason and the same concept, the starting voltage drop requirement does not apply to the bypass mode of a variable speed pressure limiting control if, again, successful start can be shown on the standby generator. So there you go. It's kind of the same issue. We're trying to address the contractor, the contactor chattering. <laughs> we don't want contractors chattering either, but, you know, we're trying to address the contactor chattering. And if we can bypass that, well, then what's the concern? 695.7D talks about the motor running. The voltage at the load side of the contactor, there you go, right? What's the issue here? The contactor. The voltage at the load side of the contactor must not fall below 5% of the motor's rating while the motor is operating at 115% of its full load current rating. All right, so the starting voltage drop, 15% of the controller. The running voltage drop, 5% of the motor. All right, so again, we have to be careful on this. Let's take a look here. The full load current of a three-phase 460 volt motor is 3.4 amps. Now, how do I know that? I do not use the nameplate. I go to the NEC table to figure out that value. So I go to table 430.248 for a three-phase motor. It's 3.4 amps. So the voltage at the contactor should be no less than 437 volts, which is... 460 volts times 0.95, right? 5%. When supplying a load of 115% of that 3.4 amps. So when you do your voltage drop calculation, you have to know the load, right? Well, the load is the current of the motor times 1.15 based on the rating of the motor. So there you have it. There are the voltage drop requirements for fire pumps.